All right, so at this point in the game, we have atoms. The atoms have electrons. The electrons are randomly scattered throughout uh, this positive material. We know that that's not right. So let's enter in my favorite of the old time experiments. Rutherford's gold foil experiment. In the gold foil experiment, we've got this source of positive alpha particles. Alpha particles are really just these little helium nuclei. So they're positive. So let's add that in here. We've got this positive beam. Positive, positive, positive. And we're going to shoot that beam at a real thin sheet of gold foil. Now, if this is correct, if this early model is correct, let's find this early model. Here it is. This was Thompson's model. You know, there's a lot of empty space in an atom. We've got these randomly distributed negative electrons. But if I shoot a positive beam, and as long as I don't hit an electron, the beam should go straight through the foil. And so on the other side of the foil, we've got kind of this uh, detector plate that goes around the foil that can pick up these positive alpha particles. They assumed that these alpha particles should go straight through the foil if Thompson's model was correct. As long as I don't hit an electron, I should find most of my hits right smack on the other side of the foil, which actually did happen. Yay. Most of these alpha particles were detected right smack on the other side of the foil. So everybody's probably like fist pumping, high five, and like, yep, we got this figured out. We've got the atomic structure all set. And then all of a sudden, there was a hit in a goofy location. These alpha particles would hit the foil and, whoa, what's going on here? This is strange. That positive particle was deflected at a really strange angle. And holy cow, there's one that almost just hit us in the face. Whoa, this is weird. This is not what I expected. Now, most of the particles did go right through. But on occasion, there was an alpha particle detected at a goofy angle. And so they said, wait a second. It's as if these positive alpha particles were hitting something that's also positively charged likes repel so we need to alter our atomic structure a little bit so here's rutherford's model it explains exactly what they were experiencing if we take all that positively charged material and we condense it into the core of the atom. Now this kind of makes sense with the data collected. As long as I don't hit the nucleus, then yeah, these positive alpha particles really do go straight through the atom. And that would explain why, you know, let's say it was like 90% of all the shots fired really did show up right smack on the other side of the foil. Well, yeah, look at all these guys. As long as I don't hit the nucleus, these alpha particles really would go straight through. But now with the positive material being condensed into the core of the atom, the nucleus, that explains why on occasion we had some hits that were deflected at strange angles. Depending on where I hit the nucleus, those alpha particles would bounce off at goofy angles. Okay, so now this is a little better. We've got the negative electrons. He didn't really know what to do with them, so he said, I don't know, I'll just throw them on the outside. But now I'm going to condense the positive material into the core of the atom. We're going to call it the nucleus. I love this experiment. And then finally, if you're ever curious, 
Uh, James Chadwick is given credit for the neutron. Chadwick was experimenting with radioactivity in the Curies, Madame Juliet Curie might ring a bell. And they were finding that there are different kinds of particles emitted from radioactive sources. There was one particle that was of particular interest to Chadwick. It was a neutral particle emitted from the nucleus, had a lot of similar properties to a proton. It just had no charge. So he called it the neutron. It had mass. It contributed mass to the overall atom, but it was not affected by any kind of a charged field.